Welcome back to Cure of the Common Game. Today we're going to be talking about Mr. Ambassador Loquacious. That's right, just stone cold milling. Putting cards from the library straight into the graveyard. I don't know if I've ever built one more focused than this one. I guess first and foremost we need to get to the milling cards. Which, as you can see, there's a bunch of. Altera of the Brood. I can think of a good buddy of mine, Mark, taught me the power of this card. Alter the Brood on turn one. I mean, because it mills each opponent. And that's the beautiful part for one mana for the rest of the game. Because it's, it's typically not one of those cards that is going to draw a removal. It may, die, it may die in a massive, you know, destroy all artifacts deal, but typically they're not going to, you know, got to get rid of that altar. Eh. Keening Stone. They're going to mill. Sands of Delirium. They're going to mill. Memory Erosion. Can we clean this up a little bit? Evidently not. Fraying Sanity, by the way. Fraying Sanity is a beautiful card. Um, uh, another good friend of mine, Josh, saw the power of Fraying Sanity with Fleet Swallower because, you know, that's just game over. Now, I do have the stuff like the Curse of the Bloody Tome, Jace's Erasure, the, the, the AHA Archive Trap, Gotcha, gotcha, you tutored, you cracked a fetch, gotcha, startled awake, because that's what happens when you scare somebody awake, the, the nightmare follows them, I guess, windfall, and, and, and this is actually not bad for you, because it draws you more cards, you know, because odds are you're going to be playing out here, this is not a blue deck that holds a bunch of cards, Thought Scour, Dream Twist. Sanity Grinding's not bad in a mono blue deck. Hey. Increasing Confusion. Now, um, Cast in the Graveyard, double it. So, that's kind of sweet. Come on now. Mind Sculpt, Tome Scour. Got to have our Traumatize. Because, you know, and, and I had to. I wanted that white border too. Y'all know how much I love white border. Oh, by the way, uh, Bordifies is a thing that exists. Um, I know Star City carries the black ones. It is a perfect fit sleeve that has a border on the sleeve. So if you want to like uh, to get your OG duels or whatever, uh, uh, maybe you just like that art on clone and want a black border. But I'm more impressed with they have white border ones too. So you can make your black border cards look white border. Star City don't carry those. We're going to have to import those, but they're really, really neat. Anyway, back to the milling. Yeah. Just a lot of things that, wow, that's, that's, uh, I think maybe when there's so much text like that, what was that nine lines of text that it just doesn't like that far away, maybe. Jace's Mind Seeker. Oh, and this guy. Heating Crowd, back in the day when you could, like, in straight triples into card draft, you could get, like, six of these bastards, and you just do nothing but. Because, I mean, him and Play Lands, and you had that little 1 5 little crab there, or whatever, and you just sit there and play Lands, and you just mill them out in 40 card format. And it's funny. Dreadwaters. A number of lands you control? Um, okay. And of course, Psychic Spiral. Here, let's see if we can get a little closer here to get this. We'll zoom out when we have to. From your library, so all of those Everybody Mills cards or Everybody Draws cards or the Windfalls and stuff like that, pretty sweet. We have a little bit of personal card draw in the Brainstorm ponder of course visions from beyond that condition will be met so it's uh i should say ancestral recall because in this deck 
it's gonna happen. I mean, you may have to, if you open up with this in your hand, you, you may have to hang on to it for a little bit, but, you know, a graveyard's gonna have 20 cards. Supreme Wheel, um, Mana Leak or Impulse, I'll take it. Uh, since we're there, the only other counter magic I've got is the good old-fashioned counter spell and the Arcane Denial. wanted to use the Arcane Denial simply because it does give them the option of drawing a card. Most of the time, unless they're in dire straits, they're going to do it. So that's one less card you've got to mill. Uh, twin Cast, of course, we all know the very best Twin Cast target in the world is going to be High Tide because then... Uh, one island equals a general activation, so that's pretty sweet. Um, only other ramp that I've got is that they're Mind Stone, because all my Sapphire uh, medallions are taken. Now, got the, the old Howling Mine, the Kami, Otherworld Atlas, Temple Bell, Dictate, and of course, the, the Force Fruition. Force Fruition is the epitome of too much ice cream. Everybody loves to draw cards until they have a handful of Dark Ritual and uh, low mana things. And then you just draw yourself out. There have been games where I've just played Force Fruition and just left it there. And people don't, until they take an active turn with it. It's uh, well until the fa the first player takes an active turn with it. They don't realize exactly how dangerous it is because you're giving them all the toys, but for every one card they play, they're drawing seven. You know it it, it tends to make uh, your um, ornithopters and mox opals not look as cool. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah. We're milling and we don't want them to uh, shuffle their library in, so we've got stuff like. Termoids Crypt. Now, I'm running Bizarre Wonders as a 5-mana Termoids Crypt because... And where else am I going to use the damn Bizarre Wonders, you know? Um, it does nuke all graveyards, which is kind of why I like it. It's kind of why it's worth the 5-mana. 99.9% of the time, that second line is not even there. Of course, we have the Graft Digger's Cage because invariably we're going to be helping somebody at the table. Somebody's going to be like playing with zombies or something and be like, yeah, you're just fueling me. Well, you know what? Here's a cage, buddy. And then, of course, we have the Python Needle. And the reason why we have the Python Needle is so that we can name cards like the Elixir of Immortality, which we're going to be playing with, or things like that. Felton's Cane. Now, I'm, of course, running that crazy library because, you know, why not? Proteus Staff, I really like the Proteus Staff. Uh, it can now, man, I hate that last play of sorcery. It's sorcery speed activated ability, but it can take the general out of, uh, out of the picture provided it ain't like, you know, mid-combat coming at you, but you can make them recast their general enough to where they can't, you know, cast it, or if something is coming at you, as long as it ain't got pro artifact, you know, you can, uh, as long as you can survive through the hit, I guess you could proactively do it, but then you just make enemies. <laughs> Okie dokie, so, um... Let's see here. How are we going to win? Our backup plans. Backup plan. Kefnet's a pretty decent backup plan slash draw because, you know, we're probably going to have the seven and, you know, five files for three mana that are flying and indestructible. Seems pretty good. Almost as good as the Psychosis Crawler because that's really good for this much card draw. You know what? I forgot. Hold on. Hold on. Uh... I'm sure I have one. I'll keep going here. Uh, I, I'm doing a last minute. I realized I forgot a card. Uh, Black Vice is going to help you get there as well. How could I forget that? Can you believe that? I almost forgot the damn millstone. Um, put that 4th edition binder back up. 
mind lock orb because once you start milling people, they start wanting to, uh, you know, tutor the stuff out of their library to go find their answers or whatnot. So the mind lock orb is going to keep that from happening. Put this in a side loading perfect fit. Hey, guess what, guys? We have a millstone. You know, I mean, we we call it milling, and I didn't have a millstone. Can you believe that? Sometimes I just go a little bit nuts. Uh, I also need a font of mythos, but it's not like I don't have any of those. Um, wash out. Let's, let's push the air. Double sleeve. It happens. Uh, let's wash out. Now, I like that it's permanence. So, I, I mean, you can net walkers and enchantments and things like that obviously we are kind of you know very very vulnerable to a lot of things i mean board wipes on her we ain't got that many dudes but things like whelming wave i mean it's going to take 99 percent of creatures back to the hand uh, sunken hope is gonna just make them keep bouncing the dude a turn so it it'll thin the board but not like I've got telepathy, which is not. I mean, here again, turn one telepathy. This is a sexy thing. But if you really want to stall the game and slow it down and just let everybody draw out, if you maybe you got your fourth fruition out there and your your general and you're just you know in for the ride, Arcane Lab will get you there. It slows it down. You only play one spell per turn, and really. And, I mean, the idea in EDH is, of course, as you know, you want to make those power four or five play turns. And, and as long as the lab's out there, it just can't happen. There's only one card I believe that's better at stalling out a game and just letting them draw go until they mill out. And that's our buddy Stasis here. You're going to have the blue. Uh, obviously... This is a late, late game card, uh, but as many cards as we're drawing, you can just about bank on being able to keep this out there a while, even longer than the lands you currently have when you cast it, because uh, back in like 96, when we first got uh, to, uh, Force of Will and stuff, we had like... Um, turbo stasis and the idea was you just draw so many cards that you're able to keep stasis alive just by never ever ever missing a land drop or an island drop if you will so and of course i'm running the uh the ghost quarter and the field of runes to get rid of those nasty lands that you know are a hindrance to our plan Sheldock Isle, I, I don't normally don't do the lands, but Sheldock Isle is, yeah, it's on theme. I, I mean, yeah, it, it doesn't come into play tab, so it's, but it's not an island. So I mean, if you draw it and your high tide's not going to help, but anyway, um, you can get a free spell out of it. I mean, it, it's not outstanding, but it ain't bad either, I guess. Well, that's what I've got for the Ambedastor. He would make an excellent Ambedastor. Or if that word's just too hard to say, you can use bait. But anyway, I appreciate you watching. Y'all let me know what you think. We're going to shuffle and cut.